In order to understand how to invest her money wisely as a black domestic worker in 1850s California, Mary Ellen Pleasant eavesdropped on her rich patrons. In the future, she made use of this information to create a real estate empire that was worth over $30 million. Before beginning to amass a real estate portfolio, Pleasant put her investing proceeds to good use by acquiring companies like laundromats and boarding houses. She soon acquired stock in additional companies, including banks, dairies, and restaurants. Her white male business partner is thought to have assisted her in making multiple investments under his name so that she wouldn't have to deal with the same obstacles that other aspiring black businesswomen of the time did. Pleasant quickly rose to become one of the richest women in America. She always sought to use her wealth for good, initially by supporting anti-slavery campaigns and later by opposing racial prejudice. She once made the infamous statement, I'd rather be a corpse than a coward. When it came to sticking up for what she believed in, by the 1880s, the wild, mud-caked San Francisco that Mary Ellen Pleasant, the capitalist, had carved her way into had itself transformed into a very much overtly racist city. The press coined a nickname intended to diminish her power with the racist image it conjured, Mammy Pleasant. Unsurprisingly, she loathed it. It gives me the sasperations, she wrote. The media had described her in terms of the paranormal, but now they had turned her into a blatant monster by changing her with witchcraft and insinuating she was responsible for Thomas Bell's murder, who was the very same white business partner mentioned earlier. Because of hate, revenge, and racism, according to Bibbs, Mary Ellen Pleasant had become too powerful, too vocal, and nearly diabolical for the powers that be. Who used this piece to spark a public backlash against her? A KQED.org article states that Mary Ellen Pleasant died in 1904 in her 90s, with her fortunes greatly diminished by scandal. Her obituary in the San Francisco Examiner was titled, Mammy Pleasant Will Work Weird Spells No More. In her own writings, Teresa Bell defined Pleasant as a demon from first to last. Learning the details of her extraordinary life, it's hard to imagine how Mary Pleasant isn't a towering figure in San Francisco's history. Yet, how we're remembered depends on who's telling your story. From the newspapers to her early biographers, Pleasant's life has been so mangled. One could not tell who she was.